right now we're kind of in a flux between these amazing medicinal fabrics, but we're also heavily promoting and wearing polyester, which isn't necessarily the best type of material to put on the body, but it's, it's happening. It's in the alternative plant-based wardrobe and textile industries occurring. And we're finding that a more variety of plants, the better. So not just wearing cotton and linen, but producing more and more rami, nettle, hemp, pina, cactus fiber, all different types, seaweed, algae fiber, all different types of plants. And that can also be a way to connect with the spirit plant consciousness and use our plant fabrics as plant medicine. Are you curious about discovering ways of making your life better? Then welcome to my podcast. I'm Bob Nickman, and this is The Exploding Human. Listen in while I talk with all kinds of people in the fields of personal growth, health and healing, alternative therapies, psychology, spirituality, environment, and the future. I'm looking for those answers that make life better for everyone. You'll meet cutting-edge practitioners, doctors, artists, filmmakers, business people, and those who have overcome challenges. The brave, the curious, anyone who is out there helping us humans to explore, expand, and explode. Hey, welcome to The Exploding Human. My name is Bob Nickman. My guest today is Alyssa Couture, and we are going to be talking about healthy fashion. But first, I'd like to invite you to visit my website, theexplodinghuman.com. You can listen to episodes there, read synopses of the episodes, see photos of my guests, little bio on myself, and you can contact me through email over there. Also, there is a YouTube channel, The Exploding Human with Bob Nickman. You can listen to episodes there. And there is the Exploding Human Facebook page. As I said, my guest today is Alyssa Couture, and she has written a book called Healthy Fashion, The Deeper Truths. We're going to be talking about fashion in terms of garments that are aerodynamic and tactile friendly. In other words, they feel good. Cosmetic fabrics, what are those? We're going to find out about that. Designs uh, that are modern and universal, botanical herbal mineral dyes, plant-based fabrics. I had no idea how many plants can be used to make fabrics. This was a really fascinating discussion because I know nothing about fashion. So this was all informative to me and very eye-opening as to where we are headed in the future with fashion garments and how we can improve our planet through the way we dress and the products that we use. So let's uh, get into this. This is Alyssa Couture. I know you're in San Diego, and I'm in Los Angeles, so we're very close neighbors. And we're going to talk about all things clothing, sustainable clothing, and all the things that go with it. I am not a fashion person. In fact, I am uh, been accused of being a bit of a slob <laughs> in my dress because I, I honestly, the, here's the the truth is I just I don't care about clothes that much as long as they're clean and they're comfortable. And uh, my wife is a little bit more into the fashion thing and uh, not like high fashion or any of that. But I do appreciate the art artistry of people that understand how to dress and, and really uh, have a, an affinity toward looking a certain way. And, uh, and I know that you're deep into that world. So why don't you just tell us what you do and uh, we'll go from there. Sure. And thank you so much, Bob, for having me on your show. I am founder of Healthy Fashion Campaign, and I just launched my book, Healthy Fashion, Deeper Truths. And the book and my work is all about fashion as an alternative health remedy, fashion as a modern healing tool, a modality that can help advance our health. And through my work, I have spent a lot of time in the fashion industry, in fashion retail, visual merchandising, styling, fashion journalism. And as well, I had a handmade fashion brand 
which really got me close to being able to create a product that helps support the body. So basically what it comes down to is, and like I, I agree with you, Bob, <clears throat> some people have an amazing taste of fashion and a budget for it. <laughs> and yeah. people, uh, like myself, I'm here to survive. I'm not really, <clears throat> I'm not really about like high fashion, like in regards to my own wardrobe because I'm on a budget, but maybe someday I'd be a very well-dressed person. <laughs> but right now I focus on comfort and practicality and that works for me. But whether you're anti-fashion or you're high fashion or you're a trendy person, it doesn't matter what type of interest you are in regards to fashion, fashion affects all of us. And we can use fashion for our benefit through the health and wellness trend. And right now I have done many uh, different forms of research based on my own life experience, uh, based on internet research in regards to where fashion in the fashion industry is heading. We are deeply heavily involved in the eco-sustainable fashion industry. Right now we're trying to improve the environment, but there are a lot of things wrong with the eco-fashion industry because of the greenwashing trend. So what really can actually advance the eco-sustainable market is by infiltrating health and wellness fashion. Fashion that can uh, not cure, but alleviate some forms of ailments. And that, uh, for example, would mean cosmetic fabrics. And cosmetic fabrics are fabrics that have been treated with, say, seaweed or zinc powder or special herbs like turmeric and neem and aloe vera. And one example is earth, earth, putics, earth therapeutics. They've uh, developed some spa-like gloves and socks with an aloe vera-treated um, fabric, as well as in Europe, they have created a Lysel tensile that they have infused seaweed powder into the Lysel and the seaweed is supposed to have a skin healing properties. That is something I knew nothing about. So yay for this podcast. <clears throat> I'm actually learning something. There, there are clothes, there are pieces of clothing that actually are infused with healthy products that as it touches the skin, does it, does, is it, are they <clears throat> products that just work on a topical level or do they actually go into the bloodstream? Um, and what are the, like, what would be a healing benefit of, of something that you've maybe that you've seen or that is, that works? Cause to me, when I first hear it, I'm like, that's just a gimmick and I don't get it, Yeah, but I'm open to anything that works. So, okay. So I'll talk about, uh, plant-based fabrics in general and the healing properties and i'll go back into the cosmetic fabrics okay cool all the, right the plant-based fabrics is a treatment because uh say cotton for instance uh is cellulose based and it has a crystalline property so basically when we wear it it's like a crystal you know when certain plants absorb energy and can actually absorb toxic energy. So when we wear plant-based fabrics, it helps us during our day while it uh, absorbs the energy that we are constantly putting out. So that's one thing that we can do with uh, using our plant-based fabrics is because it is crystalline and it has crystalline properties. So for the cosmetic fabrics, um, Yes, you can just take an example. Yes, it does infuse into the bloodstream. And okay. you can take, for example, the nicotine patch is directly administered on topically through the skin. And with all of our fabric treatments and new cosmetic fabrics, some of them are not completely healthy because many of these cosmetic fabrics are using a polyester base. So they're, they're using polyester fabric and they're infusing uh, copper and minerals and vitamins. But what we really want is a 
plant-based fabric infused with these minerals and vitamins and botanicals and whatnot. So yes, indeed, it does go through the bloodstream and it's like a lotion. You know, when you apply lotion onto the skin, it absorbs it through the pores <clears throat> and deep into the bloodstream, perhaps. Um, another example of cosmetic fabrics, we can take um, the ancient samurai warriors. They would dress in indigo dyed undergarments and the indigo, the indigo dye would actually heal their wounds. It would, uh, it would heal their wounds because they applied the indigo dyed fabric on their body. And a lot of us don't really get the chance to wear organic plant-based herbal dyed products. And Ayurvastra is a big thing in India with the herbal dyeing uh, fabrics. It's called Ayurvastra, herbal dyeing. And they really have used this since ancient times. So this is nothing new. It's just for the industry and mainstream, it is new. And right now we're kind of in a flux between these amazing medicinal fabrics, but we're also heavily uh, promoting and wearing polyester, which isn't necessarily the best type of material to put on the body, but it's, it's happening. It's in the alternative plant-based wardrobe and textile industry is occurring. And we're finding that uh, a more variety of plants, the better. So not just wearing cotton and linen, but producing more and more rami, nettle, hemp, pina, um, cactus fiber, all different types, seaweed, algae fiber, all different types of plants. And that can also be um, a way to connect with the spirit plant consciousness and use our plant fabrics as plant medicine. Yeah, you know, I guess now that I'm thinking about it, before there was uh, polyester and big manufacturing companies making these uh, cloth products or fake cloth products. People must have made clothes out of plants. It makes, it makes complete sense. Um, wool from sheep, of course. And then there's, you know, cotton from cotton. And um, now we're expanding and I didn't realize cactus. That must be kind of uncomfortable. I'm, I'm kidding. That was, I was just thinking about prickly cactus. But the idea of having something that is um, coming from the ground and not filled with chemicals makes complete sense. What, one of the things I've been doing, and this is just a little aside for the folks listening, you know, the masks we had to wear for the last couple of years to, you know, leave the house and go all these places. I was taking lavender oil and putting it on the mask inside and outside because I hated the way uh, it made me feel breathing through that material and, and smelling that sort of chemically or just nothing non-air feeling. So I did that and I felt a lot better just having, you know, uh, something that is made from a flower uh, going into my, into my uh, nose. So I can totally see what you're, you're saying that ha having clothes made out of things that grow in the ground uh, would probably feel a lot better. I mean, I, you know, I have a shirt on right now that's got some fake stuff in it. I can feel it. I can tell it's, it's a little bit, it's a little bit too crisp. <laughs> it doesn't, it doesn't hang on, on the body in a comfortable way. And, um, you know, it's okay, but it, it I understand. So who is making this, uh, these products? Where do people find this? And is it outrageously expensive because it's such a niche of marketing? Uh, well, Bob, this is just one aspect of fashion for health. I dive into fashion for mental health, emotional health, physical health, okay. spiritual health, and energetic health. But I will mention um, 
When you spoke about polyester, it did launch in the 1930s, and these were launched by chemical giants Monsanto, Bayer, DuPont. And before then, we were wearing a lot of hemp and, and cotton. So even back further, in South America, I, I don't know the specific date on the top of my head, but they were producing textiles using over 550 different types of plants. Mm. So that's really the type of direction that we want to take in regards to creating a, a better ecological system, creating a more um, biodiverse system in on the planet, because with our heavily endorsed um, product of polyester, cracking into the earth and sucking out the, the oil and then wearing it is not benefiting us completely. And for instance, and did you want to say something? No, I'm just no. nodding because I'm, <laughs> I'm enjoying what you're saying. So with the petroleum oil, and the mixture of 8,000 different types of chemicals that are being used to produce these textiles in different types of levels of harshness, some people are finding that the fibers through scientific research are carcinogenic. And the lack of breath breathability is a big thing with polyester. It is very hard to develop a polyester synthetic fiber that is uh, breathable for the yeah. body. And whatever science tells you, the body has to breathe. For example, nylons. Nylons are, are kind of uh, not good for the skin. And we have all these yeast infections and the doctor prescribes us cotton underwear you know, you never want to wear polyester when you have a yeast infection. So this breathability is a serious thing, and polyester is kind of getting in the way with that. So that's why we really want to get, get back into plant-based fibers. Even bioplastics would be a better transition because some of those ski jackets and raincoats, you really can't mimic that with a cellulose natural processing you may we may have to do bioplastics so that's definitely going to be the future of of plant-based fabrics too is innovative developments as well as um bioplastics but back to your question what was the question <laughs> that's a good question <laughs> i was saying who's making these these things where where can people find this and is it expensive well in cosmetic fabrics, the industry, I would just do a quick Google search um, it, and you'll find a whole assortment of different brands. I'm not okay. going to mention many because many of them are using materials that aren't really up to par with uh, health and healing. So, so, so many athletic brands are taking advantage of mm. uh, you know, infusing caffeine in their fabrics. But, you know, then they're using polyester, <laughs> they're using polyester synthetics, which uh, to me and through my research is uh, slightly acidic and not as pH balanced as plant-based fabrics. And we really want a pH balanced fiber on our body. I was reading about and talking to some people in this podcast about the amount of synthetic materials that are in the environment, clothing being part of that plastics and just micro sized uh, particles that are now they're now finding in organs and in the bloodstream of people and that also the um, fertility is going down it's 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 decreasing the amount of fertility so it's you know I, I always thought about overpopulation but now we're going this whole other way where we're, where we're seeing very scientifically how harmful these things can be uh, long term not to mention fabrics are being made and they're putting uh, synthetic dyes in there and they're being washed out where where are they washing out to and what happens to those chemicals um and so it's it 
I understand, you know, the sustainable clothing and the, uh, you know, bio clothing makes complete sense to me that, you know, that long term, we're not helping ourselves. I don't care if I have flame retardant pants, never cared about those. <laughs> it, I mean, it's, it's really what's available on the market for us, unless we want to do uh, a lot of research online. And many people are doing that. And I applaud that. But we have to think about the mainstream and people that like to shop local and, and like to go into, say, even Target or, you know, your uh, retailers like Nordstrom in America. What we're finding, too, is like 90% of all fabrics are polyester. I still wear some polyester. You can't really get away from it. No. Um, you can uh, possibly, but in the winter time, it's, it's not uh, perfect for me because I don't wear wool. I'm allergic to wool. Oh yeah. And so some polyester fabrics can be ergonomic and they've saved our lives for you know, decades. So I'm not disrespecting the fiber. I just believe that we can advance our materials uh, quite considerably. And nano uh, technology is becoming a problem with uh, inhaling the plastics through nanotechnology as well. And quite possibly could be seeping into our skin. So I did read also that it's like we're eating a credit card's worth of plastic. I don't know if it's, they said a week or a day, but it's some extraordinary, um, not good for us. <laughs> so all of this plastic that we're wearing and consuming, it doesn't biodegrade. So that's another issue. Um, in ancient times, uh, people would actually burn their own clothing when it was time to give up the garment they would wear their garments till it was shredding or hold or could not be worn. And so then they would do a sacred ceremony and burn their clothes. And that was like an honorable way of them to give up and release the garment. So there's definitely psychology within fashion and we have a very strong sacred connection through our wardrobe and dress and to make fashion more conscious it's not just about the fibers that we wear it, it's about having a universal connection to fashion and creating futuristic advanced silhouettes that help the body's movement and in forms of therapy uh, where the industry is heading is ergonomic design ergonomic design is all about fashion that is practically aligning the aura and, and enhancing the aura and the chakras and alleviating the body of some of its emotional, energetic, spiritual, physical, mental uh, issues. And fashion can do that. And the reason being is because we're constantly in relation to our outfits. We're constantly in a relationship with our clothing. And when we can use it to our benefit, example, acupressure sandals. And um, this is a therapeutic health treatment for the body. You can find them online. Um, they have sandals with the little bumps that yeah, will I've seen those. massage. Yeah, yeah they'll yeah. massage the the specific points, meridian points on the bottom of your foot and compression socks. Sometimes on our body, we need specific forms of compression to help our body with circulation. And other times, looser garments are really what we need. So thinking uh, on the terms of medical and um, how we can make our wardrobe more luxurious in a spa-like way is really the movement that we're heading into with athleisure and minimal design and in luxury apparel, they do get this quite a bit. When you go into some of the luxury markets, some of their de designs, when you put it on, it feels so luxurious. And I think that everyone should feel luxurious. Everyone should have the feeling of luxury. And that's a well-crafted, well-designed silhouette when you can get to the point where a garment feels luxurious. And it could be as simple as a t-shirt. 
Yeah, I agree. I you know I am one of these people that likes um, a little bit oversized clothes for you know just the comfort level of having loose and soft and a lot of the fashion whatever that fashion means is not that it's tight and crisp and uncomfortable the idea of putting on a tie to me is just like it it, i hated it since i was a kid i i can't stand having my neck cinched up in any way it really is antithetical to feeling good (laughs) in my opinion i don't understand how uncomfortability became associated with respectability. (laughs) Exactly. That's the truth right there. So strange. Yes. No, um, ergonomic design is where we don't have to feel like we're choking with a bow tie or tie, or, you know, we're not getting itchy from nylons because nylons can make some people very itchy. Uh, You know, all of this poking and prodding and itching and tucking and squeezing and at one point, I, I remember I was sacrificing in the name of fashion. I wore a dress uh, for aesthetic purposes and I actually fainted because it was too tight. But I sacrificed in the name of fashion and we're doing this all over the planet, really, um, this sacrificial forms of fashion. And it's not just ego and superficiality, but it can stem from that. And so getting away from the sacrificial forms of dress with uncomfortability, feeling like that's a form of respect by being uncomfortable, it's not advancing society. We really want to modernize fashion by being high fashion and and modern and interesting and stylish and creative and artistic. But at the same time, we need to make sure that when we buy a garment, it's not hurting our body or affecting us, you know, energetically or in different ways, emotionally. A lot of what you're talking about are basically what everything you're talking about. There's a, a reverence and a spiritual component and a mindfulness to paying attention to, to what you're putting on your body and how it's affecting you. What I think about is paying attention to every single thing you do as you move through a day and through a life is really a matter of awareness and self-respect and and a respect for the environment that's really what you're talking about this is your approach and your uh, knowledge of this topic is really a spiritual endeavor so what i'm what i'm hearing from you it really is uh i have a strong background living in ashrams and monasteries i've have practiced meditation and yoga for quite some time and through my uh, parallel with my fashion industry work and living and working in ashrams and monasteries and trying to connect with my spiritual self, I also visited energy vortexes. So I am an energy healer, a planetary energy healer. And that's my main goal. Uh, Fashion is a passion of mine but I'm actually bringing in the energetics, the energetics of uh, how we can activate the consciousness of creating fashion as a vortex uh, for us and help uh, advance our being. It's not new. Thousands of companies are creating healthy fashion, Uh, but at the same time, in the mainstream, it is quite a new approach. And even people in the fashion industry who've worked in the industry for decades, they said this is quite new literature for the for the fashion market. And, you know, they said, oh, well, I've never connected health and fashion before. So it's definitely a fun and entertaining topic to talk about because people don't often really, you know, think about it. But more and more, I do find that there's quite a lot of inspiration Inspired people that are taking the subject of fashion for health and healing very seriously. You know, when you were just talking about uh, monasteries and ashrams, and and I think about uh, particularly Buddhist uh, monks wearing uh, robes, loose-fitting garments, and flowing loose-fitting garments of certain colors. How much is col- you know? Because there's a lot of unnatural colors that don't feel right when you look at them. Uh, in clothing. You're just like, that isn't a color I've ever seen in nature. It's just too, 
let's take lime green, for example. <laughs> mm-hmm. it, every time I see that color, I, I'm like really like turned off by it. I, it just bothers me. I, I don't know. I can't tell you why, other than that, it just feels so incredibly fake. Uh, and, but I see certain other colors that are more sort of earth tony and I feel better. Uh, it, it, so let's talk about color for a second, because that is a big, a big piece of fashion, obviously, and how they go with each other. Uh, it's a very complex subject. And I will mention too, um, an energy healer once told me, sometimes if we're not attracted to a certain color, it may be a color that we need to heal a specific you know, trauma or past life memory. I, I don't know. It, it, it could do some sort of energy healing if you embrace colors you don't like. And that's just one approach. But another approach is, naturally speaking, we're going to dress in colors we want to look at. And if we see something we don't like, we're just not going to like it. And I love to wear pastels, but I also like to wear darker colors. I wear a lot of black. And we can use all the colors of the rainbow to activate certain types of energies. And one specific uh, approach we can take is we can look at the Ascended Masters. Uh, I don't know if you've ever heard of Saint Germain. I have. Okay. So he uses the color purple to purify the body. An energy healer also once told me that, and I believe this 100%, uh, if you wear a specific color. It doesn't really um, matter that it's the dye. It's actually a vibrating energy that's healing your body, uh, just the dye alone. And it can be a synthetic dye and it's still vibrating energy that's healing me because of the color. And in the Egyptian uh, times, ancient times, they used the solarian realms where people would uh, immerse themselves in colored light rooms, lights full of specific colors that would project onto their body. So wearing specific colors that soothe you or that comfort you or that create a connection with the planet Earth, like you had said, you were drawn to earthy colors. I had a specific Thing where I thought earthy meant hippie or bohemian. <laughs> really, it turned yeah. me off, but I actually have been approaching the earth and different nature landscapes as extremely futuristic. Like this is a starship. This is a, a planet uh, ship, you know, where we're on the starship, mm-hmm. like it's really modern and futuristic. So sometimes uh, we can be turned off by colors like I have personally, but now that I'm drawn to them, I just got a backpack with a sort of an army green color. And I really didn't like army green because I connected it to a specific past memory, but now I'm kind of approaching it in a new way and it's really becoming very therapeutic. Color can really treat the body energetically speaking and spiritually with the ascended masters um and i do want to tell you one more thing with the ascended masters they each have a different color that they project outward and into themselves and these signature colors can actually enhance their aura and strengthen their aura and many people don't know this but our energy bodies can be as big as a nuclear power plant. Our energy can connect out into the universe. That's how powerful and strong the human body is, even when we don't really appear or look at ourselves that way. People will say, oh, that's a really good color for you. Now, some of that has to do with how it matches your skin tone and your hair and all that. But I think some of it is what you're talking about. There's a vibration each color has its own vibration and wavelength and, and, you know, subtle as it may be, or uh, based on, uh, you know, how sensitive you are to those things that, uh, you, you know, you ever do this where you're, you're, you're going to get dressed for the day and you go, ah, this color doesn't feel right to, for me today. 
I don't want to wear, I don't want to wear black today. I'm, I'm feeling like maybe I should do this, you know, and I don't spend a lot of time on this, but sometimes I'll pick something up and I'm like, Ugh, I'm not wearing that. <laughs> and whereas another day I like it, you know, I, I, I can't even just, and then there's colors I just won't do. I just, I just don't like them. Even in the same color, you know, like, a, a, like, let's say I, there's a, a red, a red that I like and a red that I don't like. It's, it can be that subtle. And I don't know if that's the body intuitively knowing what it needs, uh, which it, it seems to me that's what it is. It's there's a there's a intuitive feeling that you can't put into words or or even quantify, but you just go, this is right. That that's your inner self talking to you. I think I you know I I like to think that way. You know whether I'm just picky or <laughs> sensitive i'm gonna go with sensitive <laughs> i i mean you're you're intuitive uh, you're very intuitive with your wardrobe and you're intuitive with your psycho psychological emotions and feelings and your mental health and when we connect with colors i think it's definitely an intuitive factor and in what we need and um color is bringing us back into balance when we spe wear specific colors and we all have the sh our chakras with the different colors too and that can be another approach to healing our chakras there's all sorts of energy techniques that we can use for fashion and one specific point i want to talk about is creative energy in fashion and when i go out on the street say i'm walking downtown san diego and i see all this fashion i get so inspired because it's not just um about the silhouettes and the colors and the materials but it's the design it's the how someone puts together a garment the types of layers the shapes and the textures involved and we can really get into tactile therapy as a specific form of treatment. I know that texture is a big thing, and especially with people with um, autism, they've used uh, specific brands have used seamless clothing. And I think, you know, we don't have to have uh, a, a disease or we don't have to be autistic to wear comfortable clothes. You know, um, it's it, I really do actually think we have to practice uh, the fashion brands that are promoting uh, accessible fashion, fashion that is treating specific diseases, say for anxiety, uh, certain textures. Um, uh, textures can provide an assortment of different he uh, healing attributes. All in all, the creative energy of design is an extreme factor. And we all go into the museums and we check out the paintings and the sculptures and the artwork. And we are so inspired and excited by these artworks and the creative energy behind it. When we put on these clothing pieces, we are truly uh, doing some form of art and we are practicing some form of creative energy and we can wear the same outfit every single day for years and it still has that creative energy it there's there's still that power behind fashion whether you wear hundreds of different outfits or one single outfit it always uh, communicates to us in a different way, in a sort of process in evolution. Say, say the name of your book again. Say it real slow. The Healthy Fashion, The Deeper Truth. This is my book, published by John Hunt Publishing. It was published December 2021. So it's a okay. pretty much a new release. And going back to a person wearing one garment over and over, and it's still stylish, it's still powerful and modern, Carl Lagerfeld. He wore that same suit with a collar raised up high, the famous fashion designer in Paris. Mm -hmm. And for some reason, it was always fresh and new. So some of this eccentricity uh, in fashion, some of the quirkiness is very stylish. It's very original and fresh. It, so it doesn't matter if you're fashion or if you're not into fashion, you're participating in, in the collective community of fashion in general, and that promotes health and healing. 
I was just thinking about when my children were little, they don't have any sense of what is cool or not cool or any of that stuff. They just put stuff on and it really can be extraordinarily odd if you want to look at it in terms of what's acceptable and what's not, but they don't care. And you can kind of watch them. It's very playful and it's very, you know, uh, a way for them to relate to the world around them. And they'll, they'll put on, you know, scarves and weird hats and put wear clothes in, uh, you know, put a pair of pants on their head. They don't care, you know, and, it, and it's just really fun to see that. Whereas if, you know, you or I went out like that, we would certainly be uh, <laughs> probably laughed at or just like, depending on where we went, but certainly I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't put a pair of pants on my head and a scarf and, uh, you know, in a dress and go to a job interview. That just wouldn't work. <laughs> right. No, I it, actually, to add to your point, J. Crew, if you research their fashion, they actually tap into children's wear and how children style their clothes with a sense of playfulness. And uh, the stylists and designers at J. Crew will use children's apparel and style their clothes in a childlike way. And somehow they can pull it off. And I, I don't quite know how they do, but they do. They, they bring a sense of usefulness to the clothes by sort of looking at the children's apparel. Yeah, and I also think about, you know, uh, cultures, and I'm not even judging this other than um, it, doesn't, it, it doesn't appeal to me. But if you take a culture like, uh, I'll just pick uh, Amish culture, which is very um, plain, dark clothes, very simple uh, and I know it's about, you know, the, the thought is that it's reverent and I'm not being extravagant and egocentric and ostentatious. And I'm, I'm having respect for, for God in that way. And, and a lot of religions will do that. And it's, you know, part of it, you can see it as control of, of the people. Uh, and so they don't get out of hand. And the other part, I, I do understand that sort of simplicity and the idea of ego smashing in terms of moving in the world in this, you know, uh, outwardly material kind of a way. The interpretation of these things, you know, it varies so widely throughout the world. It's an interesting thing, you know, to kind of observe the perception somebody has about the clothes within their culture or subculture. Yeah, that's a, those are some strong points, and I agree with all of them. I will add that when we take culture, for example, and fashion, it's such a complex array of uh, research and ideas that we can uh, look at in forms of the communication of fashion that they're producing and evoking. And I will say that a lot of the traditional costume in general should be updated because um, when you look in historical movies, uh, fashion is always updated and advanced. So every culture uh, is sort of displaying their modernness and their way of life and lifestyle. I think a lot of even some of the underdeveloped uh, countries in the world um, could uh, be dressing in some forms of tribal wear. And in my concept of universal fashion, uh, advancing traditional costume with respect to culture. I, I mean, I wouldn't tell the monk to dress, not dress in a robe, <laughs> you know, yeah. with respect to culture and religion and spirituality and whatnot. I think the suppression within the governments and ruling specific uniforms is uh, pretty harsh and it's definitely a reflection of a societal regime in a sense of suppression as you say well, again you know the approach to anything really is about a perception and and the intent of what what am i what am i really trying to do here in this moment on in, in this uh, in this world is it a spiritual endeavor is it a you know, materialistic kind of uh, egocentric endeavor not to say that one is better than the other necessarily i mean i do both so you know who's to say <laughs> uh, 
Um, I enjoy, uh, you know, I have a friend, he's an actor and he, he, he loves to dress, you know, fairly, uh, outlandishly and he, he calls it plumage. You know, yeah. he said, I like I like plumage. What can I say? I like plumage and it makes him happy. He smiles, he enjoys himself. Well, who am I to say either way? What, what, what that is, if he's happy, it's not hurting anybody, you know? So, uh, that's not me, but that's him. So do, can people visit you at, at a website so we can, um, if they want to, or, and also can, is your book available, um, in any specific places, like obviously Amazon, people always say that, but is, is that where, can we get it there? Yeah. So healthy fashion, the deeper truth is a reference manual slash guidebook in regards to the new paradigm shift in this world in, in, in advancing the methods of fashion. And you can find it on Amazon, Barnes and Noble, Books a Million, all major bookstores worldwide. And you can order it on their database. And if they want to find it through your name, they can do that too, probably. Uh, you can uh, go to my website, www.h as in healthy, f as in fashion campaign.com. That's my HF one. campaign. Is that what you yes, just said? HF. HF, HF campaign. Dot com. Yes. Okay. And that's a great website for all things Alyssa Couture. <laughs> did I say it correctly? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and that is her real name. That isn't a fashion name, even though it's a name that's in fashion. Yeah. I wanted to thank you so much for spending this time with me this morning. I really enjoyed it. And guess what? I learned a ton of stuff. I didn't, there was so much you dispensed that I had no idea was there. And it really opened me up to some new way of thinking, which I, you know, I'm, I'm always happy when that happens. I'm, and I'm always pleasantly surprised. Sometimes I think I know more than I do. And so I, I have to say <laughs> this was all good stuff. Well, you knew quite a bit. You've uh, definitely added to the conversation more than quite a bit. So thank you for that. Oh, good. I'm glad. I'm a curious guy. What can I say? I, <laughs> I try to I try to make connections between the other things I've learned and the new material. So I hope I was able to do that for, for you and uh, the other folks. And uh, have a fabulous day. And uh, let's, uh, I'm going to change my shirt after this. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much, Mom. Thank you. Much appreciation for you folks tuning in to The Exploding Human. Check out the website, theexplodinghuman.com, the YouTube channel, The Exploding Human with Bob Nickman, and The Exploding Human Facebook page. Again, big thanks to Alyssa Couture. Check out her book, Healthy Fashion, The Deeper Truths. I will put a link to that in the description. And I hope you guys have a fantastic day. Bye.